In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up your new Indigo 500 transmitter using its display interface. To set up your Indigo 500 transmitter, you can do this before you permanently install it, but you will need to A, power it on, and B, connect your measurement probe, because that's how the Indigo 520 is going to know what parameters it can output. So this is the main view that you'll get after startup, and there may be default parameters shown. But let me show you how to configure this yourself. We're going to start by going to the menu, home settings, and this tab indicating measurements is telling us that we're looking at our settings for that screen that I was just on. As you can see, there are options for four parameters that can be shown at the same time, and then a little indication of where they'll be shown, which is pretty handy. So this is already showing relative humidity and temperature. I have an HMP3 probe attached to it. Um, let's say I also want to look at dew point and I'll keep those up there. There are going to be two tabs if you have two probes connected with, with each of them labeled. Um, so you can pick which probe you want your measurement to be coming from. In this case, I only have one probe plugged in, um, so there's no option. I'll go ahead and hit dew point frost point temperature. I like that a little better than dew point temperature. There we go. And then if I back out to home, you'll see that's been added here. You can also see the indication that it's probe one. So again, if you're using the Indigo 520 with dual probes, you can tell which probe your measurement is coming from, from this main screen. In addition to this measurements view, the home screen offers a graph view. Here we have a default graph view with two parameters showing, so our relative humidity and temperature, each from probe one. This is configured separate from the measurements view, so you can look at different parameters if that's what you want. Let's go into configuration for this screen. We'll go to the menu, home settings, and now instead of the measurements view, we'll move to graph. So you can see you can pick two parameters to graph, and you can pick a graphing scale. So I can have this as a full minute span or a full day span, depending on what trending you are interested in. The last screen view that I want to show you from the main page is going to be this final view, which shows your outputs and relays so that it's easy to check all of your communication settings. Let's get these configured next. Go to our menu again, and now we want to go to outputs. As you can see, there are options to configure the analog outputs, the relays, and the Modbus communication. Let's start with analog outputs. The first thing you need to do when configuring your analog outputs is select your output mode. So right now it's set to zero to 10 volts, but we can do any of these options. For example, four to 20 current. This output mode applies to all four outputs, whichever you configure. From this main screen, you can also configure which outputs you actually want to use. These can only be toggled on and off once the outputs are configured. So let's do that. Start with the analog output channel one here. Let's say we want to output relative humidity. As you can see, there's labeled probe one if you have an Indigo 520 transmitter configured for dual probes, there will be a second probe shown, and you can choose which probe you're pulling your parameter from. In this case, I just have one. We'll do relative humidity and hit select. Now we need to arrange the scaling. Pretty standard scaling for humidity would be a zero to 100%. We already have the low end as zero, so I'll just change this to 100%. And you can see the label over here, so that if we were doing temperature, you know whether you're working in Fahrenheit or Celsius. You can also configure the error output and clipping limits from here. 
I would repeat as desired for other outputs such as temperature. Now, if we go back to our main analog outs output configuration page, you can see that I am able to toggle on this first channel and we can see the output level that we're getting right now. One other detail I'll point out is that there is a test mode where you can force analog outputs so that you can confirm they're working as expected. Let's take a look at relay setup. Again, we'll go to the menu, our output settings, and now relays. There are two relays available with this instrument. You can select your parameter, whether it will be active when you go above or below the limit that you set, and then a hysteresis value. For more information on any of these options, you can click the information button for an explanation. Once you have a limit set and a parameter selected, you can feel free to toggle the relay on just like that. Once the relay's on, you'll see settings freeze. You would need to turn them off again to make any changes. Similar to the analogs, there is a test mode for the relays here so that you can test their working as expected. And now let's imagine we're using the Modbus TCP IP communication. To enable that, again, we go to the menu, outputs, Modbus TCP IP, and we can toggle this on. We have our port number, and for more information on Modbus setup, you can refer to the instrument manual. Now that I have configured an output in a relay, if I navigate to the final screen, I'll see that reflected here. Other settings that can be configured via the display interface are things like date and time. To make those sort of changes, we'll go menu, transmitter, and we have a host of options, most of which are self-explanatory. Here is where you can set up date and time, of course, but also configure your network address either via DHCP or with a static IP address. Additionally, you can change units between metric and non-metric, or you can set custom units for each parameter that you're looking at. To enable data logging on the instrument, go into data logging and toggle the switch on. And lastly, I'm going to show where you can find some helpful information. If you navigate to the menu, where you see the NA here, is where you would find the transmitter's IP address if that were set up. And then the lower number is the instrument firmware, which is also helpful to know. Additionally, you can see the date and time here. And if there are any notifications, they will be displayed here. There's a notification right now because the probe that I have connection has an expired calibration. And that's how you'd set up your Indigo 500 transmitter using its touchscreen display interface. All built on the reliability and accuracy of Vicelist sensor technology.